This indictment coming out yesterday, August 1st, is in regards to Donald Trump's subversion of the 20 or the attempted subversion of the 2020 election, specifically around January 6th, the uh, kind of lead up to that and everything that happened subsequent, basically uh, to, of November 2020, where he lied and he had co-conspirators that pushed this lie. And it's not about the lie, as we will talk about, but it is the intent to overturn and subvert the election, ultimately leading to January 6th, where he, uh, you know, allegedly, you know, however you want to say this, you know, encouraged an attack on the Capitol building where well, we're trying to hang the vice president. So, you know, you know just average protesters, right? That's what they, that's what they that's what they want you to believe. So, uh, here we go. I will zoom in so you guys can see this when I pull it up. Again, apologize, apologies as always for all of the ads. See on this page. This is from Reuters. Which, by the way, Reuters and the AP are like two of the best. If you are looking at like a media literacy and a media critique. The AP and the and Reuters are, are typically some of the best reporting like of facts. Just want to get facts. Like that's my opinion. But uh, <laughs> this is my opinion on where to get facts. But Reuters and the and AP are, are very good at this. But. This is from yesterday. Donald Trump was indicted on Tuesday for his wide ranging attempts to overturn the 2020 election. The third time in four months that the former U.S. president has been criminally charged, even as his campaigns, uh, even as his campaigns to regain the presidency next year. Uh, the, the four count 45. So if only four counts. Remember that the documents case had over 30 counts. 45 page indictment charges Republican Trump with conspiring to defraud the U.S. by preventing Congress from certifying Democrat Joe Biden's victory and to deprive voters of their right to a fair election. Then President Trump pushed fraud claims he knew to be untrue, which that's going to be a big crux of this case, is, is proving basically that does he, he knew that this was fake. Pressured state and federal officials, including Vice President Mike Pence, which we know is a fact, because because of that's the whole point of sending people to the Capitol um, to I'll continue reading to alter the results and finally indicting a in, uh, inciting a violent assault on the U.S. Capitol in a desperate attempt to undermine American democracy and cling to power. Prosecutors said. Now, I want to point out this. This is where I'll say, remember that fourth indictment that I mentioned like a minute ago? Well, the pressure campaign is likely to bring a fourth indictment in the state of Georgia, where Trump, in an infamous phone call, basically, I believe he called the Secretary of State, if I'm not mistaken, or if it was a, maybe it was a local, a more local countywide official that worked with the Board of Elections, one or the other. It might have been both, because I'm also confusing this with Arizona, which he also tried to do this in, by the way, which I don't know if they're actually... I don't know if like Jack Smith is looking into this or if any other uh, prosecutors looking into this uh, more detailed, but allegedly in Arizona, it's it, there is like the similar claim or if not the similar claim, the same claim as what is happening in Georgia, where Trump infamously said, I need you to find me 11,000 votes. On a phone call that was recorded. So this is not like a. Surprise. Uh, that that's going to be a big deal. This one is not a surprise. Uh, you know, knowing once like that first indictment came now, obviously until the first one came, we didn't know if he was going to be held to account on all these things. It's kind of silly that the first one in New York, as I kind of uh, alluded to earlier, uh, was about the Stormy Daniels case, which is a hush money payment to him having a alleged affair. I, I suppose it's confirmed, but an affair with a porn star. Where, which like in isolation as a private citizen, do you, I guess. But the hush money payment was so that he would uh, not have the 2016 campaign impacted by this. 
that is the weakest of all of these cases. That is the most, the least um, important when it comes to the political dynamics, when it comes to the democracy of the United States, when it comes to the sustained health of the country, like I don't really care that much about that one in comparison to the other two so far. And the third one that could come and, you know, again, we don't know what could come next, right? The documents case is less important to me than this one. Although there is more accounts on that, there's more likelihood of like him being found culpable, liable, guilty, whatever you, however you want to put it. Um, I think it would be guilty because it is a actual criminal case. But um, you know, it's likely I think that he will be found guilty in that case. I think it's likely that he will be found guilty in this case. Um, but I think that this case is the one that is the most important. Uh, in t like it, in tandem with the Georgia findings, which I think also should be tied together with Arizona. And I'm, I don't know for a fact, but I think there were also things that were going on in Pennsylvania with pressuring, although we had a, a, a Democratic governor. So these things are all intertwined. The attempted overturning of an election is treasonous, if you ask me. Now, that's that's a loaded term obviously it's a legal term to prove treason that's a different that's a different standard but in my opinion it's very anti-american to try to overturn an election as somebody that has lost two elections one by 38 votes and one by 86 votes i didn't try to overturn an election even though i could you know physically go in there into the board of elections and be like stop the stop the steal stop the steal i'm winning i'm winning because i was winning at the, by the way in uh in the first election i had up until like 3 a.m. So this is not a norm that we want to set in America. We don't want to set it for Americans. We don't want to set it for other countries because we have no credibility in promoting democracy across the world when a potential president, a former president, and a potential future president is going around undermining our election systems and our elections with no evidence, with no evidence. Not a sh not a shred of evidence. Um, the one key thing that's why the reason why I still have this article up. One key thing of note is that um, the case, this case, this new one, has been assigned to U.S. District Attorney or District Judge Tanya Chutkin, who was appointed by Trump's predecessor, Obama. And. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, the uh, other federal case, a documents case, is in front of a Trump-appointed judge, which, of course, presents its own challenges in its likelihood to hold up its standard. Um, there is a potential for the, case, the documents case to be moved because there is, I would argue that there is a conflict of interest between a case regarding somebody that literally appointed you to your position. It would be like, you know, if, um, if, if my, if my best friend, uh, well, it doesn't have to be my best friend. If my neighbor thinks that like, oh, he's the smartest, he's the smartest guy about lifting. And I'm just going to promote him to this position of like coach of the football powerlifting team, whatever. Um, obviously it would be unfair for me to then be like giving out awards to, <laughs> to the best lifter and that neighbors on the team and they're not the strongest person, right? Like it's, it's a silly analogy, but it's saying like, there's obvious conflicts of influence, a, a conflicts of interest with smaller examples than the president appointed you to a position. Like there are. There are way less uh, like conflicting positions or conflicting appointments or conflicting hirings than something like this that would not be able to to fly. Right. Like uh, a superintendent being related to like a, a, a principal or, um, you know, like a CEO hiring their kid to be like the CFO. I mean, like there's a lot of these things that are, you know, it's not nepotism. This is, this is different, but you know, I'm trying to give examples in different ways where we would kind of think outside the box and be like, okay, well, obviously this is not like normal. You wouldn't, there was some sort of conflict of interest. 
Um, or the person that gave me my first job? Is it right for, for me then to, to be, uh, <laughs> to go after them? It's not right. Like there's a conflict of interest that immediately comes with that. And likely, hopefully that will be moved. But, uh, Tanya Chutkin, who is the, uh, judge in this case is also very well known for the prosecution and sentencing of multiple January 6 rioters, which is something that the Trump campaign and the Trump people are very aware of and afraid of. As they probably should be. So let's take a look at special counsel Jack Smith's press conference where he discusses this. And I will have to find the exact starting position because he is walking video, but bear with me for a moment while we find Jack Smith unveiled using the form nope. with conspiring we go. to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. In the 45 page indictment, prosecutors described a sprawling multi state conspiracy built upon Trump's repeated false claims that Democrat Joe Biden's victory had been marred by widespread fraud. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. According to the indictment, Trump ignored advisors and attorneys who told him the election was not fraudulent, including then Vice President Mike Pence. These guys love to stand normally. Can you like... Can we just take a look at that one more time? Like these guys just like they cannot be more relaxed, more comfortable. This is just a normal guy. This is a normal guy. They're super connected. They're not awkward at all. President Mike Pence, White House lawyers and the director of national intelligence. Instead, prosecutors wrote, quote, the defendant pushed officials in certain states to ignore the popular vote, disenfranchise millions of voters, dismiss legitimate electors. That's what I need from there. Now, let's go to America's mayor. America's mayor, Rudolph Giuliani. And I'll tell you why this is important here in a second. Here is Rudy Giuliani talking to, forget this guy's name. So it's something hilarious. Um, hopefully they show it during this on Newsmax. It's like Stenchville or something like that. Stankfield or something like that. And it, it, this is a, an interesting reaction from co-conspirator Rudy Giuliani. Careful what you say. He still is the, the special uh, investigator, the special prosecutor. I, you know, I'm, I kind of you know, yours and, and others future. Go ahead. Long ago, oh no! Sorry, this is Eric Bowling. This is not Stenchfield. Stop being careful, and I didn't worry. I don't worry about the Jack Smiths of this world. Uh, I have a chapter in my book called "Stand Up to Bullies." So here's what I say to Jack: Must be a good bully. I mean, <laughs> sorry, must be a good chapter. Smith, after the Supreme Court threw out your case, which is, should 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 have been a disgrace, and you should have gone and found another profession because you don't. This is the guy calling Jack Smith a disgrace that was literally giving a press conference in front of a lawn care provider or a lawn care service, a landscape company in Pennsylvania, uh, where he had hair dye dripping down his face with Sidney Powell saying that the election was stolen. I, re I remember where I was when I saw that. I remember vividly seeing it on the TV. I remember exactly where I was watching January 6th and the couple days after seeing these nut jobs lie about the 2020 election. I don't belong in this one. This one will be your legacy. I, I would probably venture to bet that this indictment being Jack Smith's legacy is probably not a bad thing for Jack Smith. Violating the right of free speech of an American citizen, never mind whether he was president or not. So I'll take that back quickly. 
Giuliani and other Republicans are saying that the indictment is within the uh, is basically attacking Trump's freedom of speech because remember Trump is allegedly inciting a riot in 2021 leading up to January 6th. This is not to say that he can't say because it's explicit in the indictment and it is explicit from Jack Smith that it is not about the specifics of what he said. He can lie. He's allowed to lie. But it is the incitement to action of trying to subvert democracy. It is the call to action of going to the Capitol, basically. It's not just this, but it, the, obviously the large part of this is going to the Capitol and trying to get Congress to not uh, certify the election. And that's on top of him attempting to contact state officials to literally change the votes of their state. I will talk to you about this really quickly because I've never talked about this on the show before, but the GOP county chair in Bucks County, where I live, signed a letter trying to authorize fake electors, allegedly, with the letters, the letters public, but to try and change Pennsylvania's electors, because guess what? Donald Trump lost Pennsylvania because Donald Trump lost Pennsylvania, Georgia and Arizona. He lost the election. So, and, uh, and, and Wisconsin. So that is why these specifics are important. He has pressured people. He has basic, I mean, look, I said this when it first happened, the, that, that riot was incited by the president. That's my opinion. Obviously we will see how this plays out in court, but that is my opinion. I've, I've, I've said from the get-go, he basically said, we're going to go down there, we're going to march in there, and remember, this is where, I believe her name is Cassidy Hutchinson's um, uh, testimony, remember, this is under oath, testimony under oath, saying that she saw him, like, lunging towards the, to the wheel and trying to steer it so that they can go to the Capitol because the Secret Service wouldn't let him go to the Capitol, even though Trump wanted to go to the Capitol. Remember that this is Trump who didn't even send out a tweet to stop until hours after the uh, Capitol was broken into? I say this as somebody from Bucks County, where the, like, the single largest uh, population of, like, in one county in the I believe in the country of people that went to the Capitol are from. And and again, Bucks County is not deep red. You know, rem remember that a certain person that owns a certain gym, maybe in Newtown, <laughs> sent a bus full of people to the cap to the Capitol. A, 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 um, I say this as somebody that in Doylestown had somebody that was in jail or were their actions on January 6th, trying to say that they want to kill Nancy Pelosi, who owned a gym here in Doylestown that is now out of business. I mean, <clears throat> this is serious stuff. And January 6th to me is, is an, one, it's an insurrection. Two, it, more importantly, it's treasonous. It's anti-American. And like, yeah, we talk about all this, you know, it's a platitude, it's, it's rhetorical. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's patriotism. Like, I actually give a crap about this country. And when I talk about making it better, it's not to just say like, oh, well, you know, it's just, it's all just a play toy, basically. No, 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 no. Like, I, the symbols of it, like, I would never, you know, disgrace an American flag. I, I have one right over there. It's folded up. It's from my grandfather's funeral. Like, these, these are symbols that matter to me. It doesn't have to matter to everybody else. But as a patriot, seeing the Capitol being swarmed by mob, trying to literally kill the vice president, who I don't support, by the way. I didn't support. I would never support. But it's not like I am wishing for him to get hanged at a gallows outside the Capitol. Like, this is this is where it's like there's a giant disconnect. So it, it's just okay. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, don't worry. It was just, it was just a couple of people. Yeah, as Shaz is pointing out in the chat. Uh, Pat Poprick, who is the GOP chair, is supposedly a fake elector. 
I don't know if that's the right terminology to say. I know that she signed a letter that basically was saying to support fake electors. So that like the maybe the specifics are a little muddy, but like and I could be wrong. You could be right. Um, But it's just it's one of those things where it's like this is happening in your in like your town. Like it's just all these people are out there. They're fringe, but they like. Ms. Poprick. Uh, are empowered. So this is like, it's not just attacking free speech. It's protecting democracy because uh, if you let democracy fall, let's just say you're to my left, all right? If you're watching the show and you're to my left, you should care about the democratization of the, the whole country because if you want to have a union if you want to have worker co-ops even if you want to go more extreme than than that if you wanted to you know whatever uh own the means of production to like the entire whatever right like you really want to go social the socialist route whatever you cannot do you know anything like that you cannot democratize your workplace you cannot democratize anything if you don't have a democracy that represents you in your government first because you'll be trampled on by the government. So a subversion of democracy from a, you know, what I consider myself a social democrat over to the left, you will never achieve any of your goals without the uh, democratization of the government. From, from basically, uh, I'll take, you know, if DeSantis is all the way to the right, Trump slightly to his left. Everybody, you know, that is a moderate Republican, yes, as a voter, that he still exists, all the way over, you should care about the, the democracy because, one, you're a patriot. Two, you should still want your voice to be heard. And, I mean, is there a third reason? I don't know. Like, some of some of those folks probably still care about unionization. Some of those folks still want their voice to be heard in their workplace, right? If you continue to allow for the erosion of the systems that we have without saying, well, all right, there might be issues with them, but here's a solution. Instead, we have the right wing, the ultra right wing, the mega Republicans, the Republican Party, suggesting to tear it all down, basically, and say that the elections are illegitimate if our guy doesn't win. Anybody that is basically within the normal range of Republicans a centrist, an independent, a Democrat, a liberal, a progressive, a social Democrat, a socialist. I don't care what you call yourself. Unless you're you literally believe in authoritarian uh, authoritarianism or fascism. You care about the democracy that we live in. Oh, Connor, it's not a democracy. It's a representative republic. I don't care. It's a democracy. Republic's a form of democracy. Just I'm pre preemptively saying that because I'm sure I'm going to get a comment on this saying that at some point. <laughs> if you care about the republic, if you care about the democracy, if you care about this country, if you care about 100 years from now, 200 years from now, if you care about climate change, all this different stuff, right? All this matters. It boils down to if you don't have a democracy, you're very unlikely to have any outcomes that you're going to like, unless you are the dictator, which uh, bad news for anybody watching this. You're not going to be the dictator. I got news for you. <laughs> I'm not either. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, the freedom of speech argument is absolute crap. It could be anybody. It could be a homeless person. You don't get to violate people's First Amendment rights, Smith, no matter who the hell you are, or no matter how sick you are with Trump derangement syndrome. And this isn't the first time you've acted like an unethical lawyer. It should be the last. Yeah, I guess. God forbid. Rudy Giuliani is really concerned with the freedom of speech of homeless people. He is super concerned, actually. He is so concerned that he is slamming papers on the table. That shows you how amped up he is. He really cares. 